Yes, which oil to use in your 300 series Toyota? It's a real conundrum. You can see for a long time we've been using this stuff. And these are the current listings for the DPF vehicles from Toyota. Well, it is really simple, but it's also really complicated. Mainly simple. There is a lot of oil experts, but there's even more experts that are not experts that have got an opinion on oil. Some people love this brand and hate that brand. And uh, obviously a lot of people know more than me about it, but I'll tell you what I think I know about it and what I would do if I was you. I'd like to firstly make it clear I don't own a 300 series, at least at this stage, or a 200 series or a 1GD at the moment. I've got three 1KDs and in those engines, it doesn't really matter what oil you use. The engines are tough, they don't wear out. However, in those engines, same as in the 1GD, the, uh, all the whole Toyota range, the 300 series, 200 series, in your, you'll have a um, handbook, you know, owner's manual, where you can have a look and it recommends what oil type you should use. Um, it has some written words. We've been through this before where it says, you know, Toyota recommends blah, 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 blah. And of course, it's got a temperature range for the expected temperatures over the you know, until period, until the next oil change. This is what you really need to take notice of. There's a reason they've got that there. If this was the only oil grade you could use, they wouldn't have a graph in the back of the vehicle talking about expected ambient temperatures before the next oil change, would they? Same as it's always been with older engines and newer engines, depending what climates it's used in. Newer engines, obviously tighter tolerances and things are a little bit different. But for that reason, you can get away with some thinner oils without burning it. And thinner oil will give you better fuel economy and be better for emissions. So it ticks the box there. Now, how many problems are there really with 300 series engines? Well, remember, Toyota are very good at keeping secrets and keeping under wraps. So you go to the deal, oh no, you know, we haven't had one of those, never heard of that before, you know. Um, you know, let's get rid of that engine, scrap metal, get it scrapped before someone sees it. Anyway, I've got no idea how many there is or isn't, but if there's a few around to be seen, a bit like cracked pistons, a bit like timing chains and guides, a bit like cracked EJR coolers, a bit like DPF problems, everybody knows about that class action. That one was a bit hard to hide, wasn't it? Which leads me to my next important point, specifically formulated by Toyota for Toyota vehicles equipped with D4D and diesel particulate filter. DPF. And this is where your complicated hard decision starts because do you let Toyota service the vehicle, risk it for the biscuit? Okay. And some people think, well, why is that a risk? Well, the kids are working on your vehicle. Mate, get on the video, subscribe, turn the bell on. Just have a look at some of the things we find and we see. And if you've been doing that over the years, you'll just absolutely get it and you'll be one of these people that just does the work themselves. Follow the videos, don't miss it, get yourself in the VIP group. Um, you don't even really need to if you don't want. You can do whatever you want, right? It doesn't bother me. Yeah. So for warranty, doing exactly what they say. If you want warranty, do what they say. And what we do for the customers that bring vehicles with DPFs, which we're not inviting people or trying to get business. It's not what I'm focused on. I'm trying to help you decide on oil. But but if you insisted on bringing your 1GD or say you brought your 300 series in for a service, you say, hey, Ant, I just really want you to do it. I don't want any. You know, that's your choice, right? Going to Toyota, the way they've got it all set up, going to them is your best chance of getting any warranty coverage. So if you buy the new vehicle, be prepared to take it to them. If it's got problems under warranty, they're going to work on it. The kids are going to work on it. They might forget to put something back together properly and it's no longer that reliable Toyota. Maybe you should have got the Cherry. Anyway, because that's probably going to go back under warranty as well and be as reliable. Look, it's probably going to be better than that. Point is, if you take it to the dealer, do what they say, that's for warranty. Now, if you went outside that, you might still be fine under warranty because clearly it says in the back of the book, temperature range, choose anticipated climate before the next oil change. Pretty simple stuff. Remember I said simple, but complicated. But the other factor is, besides fuel economy and emissions, I personally believe these thinner oils are helping with avoiding DPF problems. Now, I could be wrong about that. That's my personal belief. I'm suspect on another reason why, because originally these earlier engines, you can see 
This is very old, this bottle. For years we've been, it was just an example I pulled out to say, look, that's how long, this is the only oil we've used in any of these vehicles for warranty purposes. Now, there's a whole big throw of spanner in the works. If I had to keep a 300 series engine or a 1GD engine, this is the important part. What would I do? For the people that haven't seen my videos or my videos before, to be clear, I've said, I love the 1KD. I've got three of them. They work really well. There's plenty of space in the vehicles. They're a cheap investment. I can take it off-road. I can hit the tracks. I can travel the outback, fill it with dust, and I care, but I just don't care. Love the vehicles. They're reliable, and any problem or possible thought of a problem, we've got a solution, last of the best. So these newer vehicles, I will buy and sell them, okay? They will come and go. I'll learn about them, I'll use them, I'll tell you about them, I'll tell you that nobody's paying me to tell you anything about it. I'll just tell you the truth from my personal use of the vehicle. But personally, I don't feel like owning any of these highly technologically advanced emission controlled diesel hybrid type vehicles um, for any long period of time, particularly outside warranty, right? And the newer they get, the shorter I want to own them. I'm not going to modify them. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to drive them. I'm going to use them as they are minimal. Maybe throw a fridge in, a temporary battery, um, you know, maybe the window tint, a few things like that. And, you know, it's just to learn about the vehicle and tell you the pros and cons. And there's plenty, plenty of those on all these vehicles. But if I had to keep one, that's what I mean by if I had to keep one. If I had to keep a 1GD or a... 300 series gr sport yes you've got to keep it for 30 years anthony what would i do well um i might use some of this oil sometimes i might use it at the start it's going to drive out of the dealership with um you know one of these oils probably this one over here they still list different oils on their computers for the one gds the early one give it 030 the later one give it 020 you can try and figure that one out now, like I said, remember, forget all these numbers here, the temperature range in the back of the book, right? So in every country, different climates, starts off colder, doesn't get too warm, starts off very warm, gets really warm. How are you using the vehicle? Are you towing a caravan around Australia in 40 degree heat? Um, or are you traveling down in Tasmania through winter? And this is what I'm talking about. So if you're in Tasmania, you could probably use these oils all year round and not even think about it. What do I mean by vehicle use? So, and then we've got intervals. How often do you change your? We'll try and cover that one. I'll try and get this one wrapped up soon. So, if you're just, if you're, if you're uh, mum or dad using the Prado or the 300 series <clears throat> to drop off the kids at school and pick up the kids at school and go to the shops and go out for your friends with coffee or go to work and this sort of short tra traveling, this is probably not a bad choice in oil. So maybe you've got to look at what trip you're going to do. But if you're about to hook up the three and a half ton caravan on your less than three ton 300 series, <clears throat> I've got a bit of problem with that. It's in other videos. You might want to check those out. Subscribe, turn the bell on and start having a look through it. But if you're going to do that, this, in my opinion, isn't the oil for you because see what it says, 020. So do a bit of basic research on oil by reading the back of your Toyota manual. And if it says anticipated temperature, you know, 40, 45 degrees, this oil really is far from the ideal oil. And you'll be able to common sense work that out. And that's where oils like, you know, to be honest, with the newer engines, five, look, they've been recommending 530, 1030s for <clears throat> what, two decades now, 1030 and 530s for a lot of engine. And it's really just going down lower. It's about fuel economy emissions. This is not what's going to help your engine last longevity. It's going to be better for it at startup, which is, you've got to remember, that's when a massive percentage of engine wear happens at startup. But these engines are quality materials. They're not having that wear at startup that older engines had. Um, it's going to be that long haul, smaller engines, making more power with small engine sumps, that sort of thing. So because the 300 series has only got about a five odd litre some it's too small for the engine in my opinion the one gd has got nearly eight liters probably over eight liters with what's really in there same as the one kd seven or eight liters whatever they've both got decent size sumps for the size of the engine and the work it's doing in my opinion um big is always good you know like tractors well they got 10 liters 15 liters 20 you know trucks look at the amount of oil i mean it's all relative to the size of the engine so what i would do i would use i'd probably be a 530 guy um you know you can consider 540 but again 
there's a lot of variables. I mean, if you can get a 0, 30 or a 5, I wouldn't even, I'm not worried about the low numbers. My concern is, like I said, possible, not the fuel economy, I don't care about that, but that's why I believe they push these oils is for the fuel economy and to help with um, diesel particulate filter avoiding those problems, okay? So, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I could be wrong. What would I do? I'd be running the 5.30 as soon as I started going north. And if I knew I was going to be across the top of Australia, because I'm going to be using the vehicle in Australia, um, probably a 5.40 would be a good option. So, And there's some other people around, you know, saying that sort of thing at the moment. So I will certainly absolutely agree with that. Um, what I won't agree with is oil change intervals. Now, how often should you change it? At the end of the day, look, the standard interval is 10,000 Ks. And I've already explained if you're doing highway Ks versus if you're doing, you know, somebody said, and look, you know, everybody's got their opinion and sometimes they speak before they think, but how would you say, if you're just doing short trips with a Prado, taking the kids to school um, and back, then your normal interval will be okay, 10,000 Ks. Now, that's where I disagree. If you're doing all those short trips at stop, start, you're gonna be doing lower Ks, that's the one I'm going to be doing 5,000k oil changes on. So I recommend 5,000. If I had a 300 series, 100% it'd be getting 5,000k oil changes because the sump's too small. Engine oil is so much cheaper than engine and the inconvenience of having the vehicle off the road is the big one and why people buy Toyotas. So every engine's got its problems. You need to learn to manage it. You paid a lot of money for this problem, um, but it's very cheap. To get a solution, just watch my video, subscribe, turn the bell on. Anyway, so 5,000K oil changes on all of them, unless, now the one that I wouldn't worry about the 5,000K, when you're on a trip and you're doing 100Ks an hour, racking up these kilometres instead of averaging 30 kilometres an hour, your oil's three times cleaner because my concern is the soot loading from the EGR system Right, EGR system puts soot in your oil, remember? If you don't, we've got a whole playlist explaining that, right? EGR system, it's relevant on all the newer vehicles more than ever before because stricter emissions means more EGR flow, which means more soot in your oil. You're pumping it along, towing that big caravan. Use them. The more fuel you use, the more soot's going to be in your oil, but you've got to look at your average speed as well. So the 1GD, not towing, really efficient, a lot less soot in the oil, highway speeds, because it's... Engine hours, not so much kilometers, more engine hours. So work out your engine hours at 30 kilometers an hour average, going to school and back. And you know, the things we talked about, all those short trips and you're only doing, you know, 10,000 Ks in six months, that might be okay. Again, all these variables, I'm trying to paint a picture of you so you can put all the variables together to make the right decision for you, taking into account what Toyota's recommending, their warranty, their DPF talk, the weight of the oil, how often you're gonna change it, I wouldn't be modifying engines, putting different sumps on. No, 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 because your warranty is going to be, see you later, bad idea. Um, personally, I think if you, you know, maybe it's not the greatest idea to pay hundred to $150,000, unless you're absolutely loaded. I hope you didn't get a loan for it, to buy a vehicle where you can get a suitable vehicle for thirty dollars to $40,000, you get a really nice Prado. And you know, I love them. So let's wrap it up with that one. Bada bing, bada boom. Catch you in the next video. Um, we'll have a bit more talk on these 300 series, um, the 1GD engines and all these sort of topics at the moment because as I said, I'm in the market looking at a vehicle. I'm trying to work out if there's bloody anything out there that I can buy. Complete waste of money, but I'm okay. I've got the money. I won't be getting a loan. I've got money to spend. So at the end of the day, it's more about getting the vehicle to learn about it to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong and what should be done and just see real world results. Of course, EJAR is really bad. Now, one little finishing touch. I think there's a strap-on diesel coming on the 300 series. I think that's part of what the changes are. That will get rid of EGR. That means oil stay cleaner. It might help with the solution of the engine problem as well because you don't have the soot in the oil. Therefore, the oil lasts longer. There's different aspects to how long the oil is going to last. I'm not the oil specialist, but bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully this information is helpful for you. Sorry about the waffle. Catch you in the next one.